This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase. So let's get started. In the last episode we went on a massive slayer grind to train up my combat stats and we also managed to get a massive PK of the magic shortbow which basically skyrocketed our range level all the way to 70. We also picked up the first Revenant Slayer task of the account, which is going to be an essential part of this account best in slot for the Revenant weapons. Now, since I got 70 ranged and 40 defense in the last video, the first step of this video is going to be to try to get a decent PKing setup to be able to kill people to obtain the black dragonhide armor from probably bots or PKers in the Revenant Caves. Now, the reason why I'm standing here with the crazy archaeologist is because he has two items we need, the red dehyde body at a drop rate of 1 in 32 and the rune crossbow at a drop rate of 1 in 25. So I do have the magic shortbow imbued, but for PKing, if I have to kill people within just 6 levels of wilderness, I need the rune crossbow and some more ranged accuracy to be able to kill them in time. And I do have runite bolts unlocked, so that is going to be the bolts I use for when I get the crossbow as well. And can we get spoon on the first one? Oh my god, we actually did! No way! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is two wrong crossbows. Of course, the item itself unlocked as well, and some combat tasks. You can see in the background, rune crossbow unlocked. Actually spooned, but uh, we are not done yet. We still need the red dragonite body, but uh, yeah, that's one of them done. Yo, the best fashion scape in the game. Let's equip the fedora. Doesn't give any stats, but goddamn, does it look good. We got ourselves a long bone that is actually not as rare as you might think. It's one in 64 from the crazy archaeologist, but uh, more rare than the item we need. Oh, no way! Uh, that's a back to back. You can't see it in the chat, but you can still see the long bone in my inventory. Okay, that is pretty rare to get. What is happening? It's not triple back to back, but very close to. Oh, dragon arrows. They are actually pretty rare. One in 128, but can only be used with dark bow and twisted bow and I think something else, but yeah, not very useful for me. Oh, let's go. There it is. The red dehyde body has been achieved. 29 KC. That did not take long. Actually below the drop rate of 32. So yeah, let's go and actually get some PKs done. The best bolts I have unlocked is Runite Bolts, we bought 1000 of those for 172k to accompany our new rune crossbow. A 108 XP drop? 25! Okay, so 25 is the max hit with this setup. It's a very bad setup, yes, I am aware of that. Getting a PK is going to be very, very rough, but if I can hit at least 25 compared to what I think was hitting like 16 max hit with a MSB, definitely could be the difference of getting a KO or not. I'm trying to flinch this boss just to see if I can get enough damage in to get one of those totems. I don't really know how it works, to be honest, but uh, it's not looking great, to be honest. And I am being attacked, but I'm dead. Okay, well, I guess <laughs> we're gear re gearing in a bit. I think we have found the biggest noob ever, TF2 Master 409. Oh my god, I'm hitting so hard on him. He is just screwing up everything. He started running south first, then he started running north. I don't really know what is even happening. But if I'm going to be killing anyone, it has to be this guy. Dude, at this point, he is 100% out of combat, but he's just not logging out. So I'm just, please, just let me freeze him. That's all I want. He's the biggest noob. Oh, I hit him. He's in combat again. And he's walking. He has no stamina bots. Man, I'm dumb. No way. Did he actually think the exit was over here? I, I think it was back in the days, but please just give me the hits. Please. He has to run so far now. And honestly, I don't even know how much food he has. He doesn't seem to have a lot. Oh, we caught the freeze. I don't think he actually has any food left because he's not eating at all. And he doesn't seem to have stamina potions either because he's just walking. There is no way. He's dead. 15 dead. Please just risk the dehyde. Yes, he was risking the dehyde. Luckily, the dehyde is very cheap. It's like 6k per item. Oh my god. So I think he saved the archer's helm. 
Maybe the rune crossbow, glory, and maybe something else over that if you had protect item. Oh my god, snakeskin boots as well, and raging potion, divine raging potion. That is such a big upgrade for any ranged activities that I want to do. Look at me, I look like an absolute PK god. So with my gear before the black dehyde, I had 125 ranged bonus, and with these equipped and the snakeskin boots... We have 150. That is an absolutely massive accuracy increase. And on top of that, of course, we have a plus 11 range boost with the Divine Raging Potions. But now that I have all this gear, I think the best course of action is going to be to get back into Slayer and get as many Revenant tasks as I possibly can and try to get the Revenant weapons. I do have some ideas that do not require the Revenant weapons, but if I can get them, that is obviously the best. Yes, that is what we want to see. That is nearly a maxed Revenant task. They can be given from 50 all the way to 100. So 97, that's as pretty close to 100 as you can get. This is also a perfect moment to try out the Divine Ranging Potions on the Revenants with the Black Dehyde and Divine Ranging Potions. My damage on the Revenant should be absolutely insane compared to the first time I was there. All right, let's give it a go. Let's drink the ranged potion, pray ranged, and see how consistently we can hit before I had to... Oh my god, is someone already going to... Bro, I just want to record a clip of using my upgrades. I'm hitting this guy so good. I guess I can try my upgrades on this guy instead. Oh my god, is he actually going to die? I actually made the PK escape. That is so funny. Well, I guess that shows my gear is good. So last time I killed Revenant Knights, I used around 80 arrows every single kill, and this time it's about to die, and I used a total of 43 arrows for this kill. So my DPS pretty much doubled with all these upgrades. Oh my god! Yo! We got the Avarice! That is the perfect item that I wanted! This is such a good upgrade. This is basically just keep me scald the entire time, which means I don't have to go back to Edgeville and re scald myself, and it also gives a 20% damage buff towards Revenants. Obviously, using the Avarice is going to be a bit risky, but all the money that I get from the Revenants is so insanely good anyway, so I should be completely fine even if I do get smited. And if I don't get smited, I'm really only risking 168k, so it's not that bad. By the way, I just checked my Revenants tab, and it says that I have an Ancient Statuette unlocked, and uh, I think I actually got this from hitting one of the Superior Revenants one time, and then just peaced out, and it actually dropped on the ground in the cave for me, and unlocked it on the collection log, even though I never picked anything like that up. Hey, we just got the new max hit, we hit 21 damage, and my previous max hit before that was actually only 18, so this necklace gave me 3 extra max hits. And there it is, that is the first Revenant task completed in this video, and we have over a thousand Slayer points. This is all the loot, and what a task this was. 3.7 million from one task, and this task flew by now that I have the Avarice. This was really insanely fast. So with over a thousand points now, I feel like it's time to start skipping some of the more slower tasks and only do the ones that are really fast and revenant. Now, unfortunately, I can't block any task because you need quest points for that. And on top of that, revenant tasks are pretty rare. So I could really be spending a lot of these points in a short amount of time. But tasks like this, I can still do because they're so quick. We just finished 50 wilderness tasks total for 375 points. And if you're curious, we are now 60 Slayer. Now the thing is, I don't really need this for anything. I don't really have any creatures I need to kill in the wilderness. And they're not really useful for anything. So the level is kind of irrelevant. But uh, 50 tasks for all the points is really good. Besides trying to get Revenant Slayer tasks, I've been trying to pick as many melee tasks as possible, for example just skeletons that are really easy to do, because I need to get 60 attack for the Vigoras Chain Maze in the future if I get it from Revenants. But for my glove slot, I've not really had anything for the entire account, and this is of course bad for every single combat style, but I was just tipped off by this guy in Discord, saying that there are currently level 64, 70, Lava Dragon Bots that are equipped and risking a combat bracelet. And the stats for that is right here on the screen. 6 melee strength is 1.5 new max hits, so this could be absolutely massive. So I'm going to finish this task and then try to get one of those PKs.
It honestly didn't take long before I found one of the bots that the guy was talking about, Papa Soup one His stats, by the way, is on the screen right now, so you can definitely confirm that this is a bot account. I was hitting absolutely insane on this guy, and he then ran into Lava Dragons, and he got absolutely smashed. Now, there is only one small problem with this. Yes, indeed, he dropped the combat bracelet, but look at my looting bag. It is opened. If you do not loot the item directly on a bronze man, you don't unlock it. And I was attacked by PK, probably the owner of the bot farm, right as I picked that up. So right now, if I die and I do not get out of this situation, I'm going to be losing the combat bracelet unlock as I looted it in the looting bag. And at this point, I was feeling a bit stressed out. I feel like the only way we get out of this is if I unequip my black dehyde, try to land a snare on him and escape that way. So let's try it. Please just land. Oh, it splashed. Oh, he splashed on me as well. Let's. Can I equip it and try to just get a gap here maybe? I think that's my only chance to just try to get a snare on him and run away in that way. Maybe I got gap? Maybe I actually got gap? Oh my god, no way he landed in Tangle. One snare. I just need one snare and him to splash one time. And of course, he lands his Entangle. I have to wait again. Can I? I have no food. I literally just have to hope that I hit really hard on him, that I have to eat, and I don't actually die here. We have one last chance in one second. Please. Oh my god, we landed it. And he splashed his. No way. Oh, that could not have been closer. Holy. Okay, I have the... My adrenaline is pumping right now. I don't know why, but that was so insane. We can now actually unlock the combat bracelet. That is so nice to see. Look at those stats. That is uh, some really, really useful stats for the account. Oh, you love to see it. 88 Revenant, another massive Revenant task. And that is another 88 Revenant Knights defeated with no uniques. Oh, look at that! We just got the first Slayer task of a monster that is actually requiring a Slayer level to kill. 142 jellies, and really, there is only one thing that I could use from this table, and that is the Mithril Boots at a 1 in 32 drop rate. So I'm going to do this task and just pick that up, hopefully. And not too long into the task, there they are, the Mithril Boots has been unlocked, but uh, they have negative range bonus, so we're not going to be using them for now, but when I do melee, the defense bonuses is pretty good. So right now I have something massive to talk about. This could actually help me on the Revenant grind for the Revenant weapon really a lot. So currently there is a poll running if they should implement Slayer Task extension for Revenants. Since the loot changes to Revenants alongside the Wilderness boss rework, they've become pretty appealing as a Wilderness task. And by the way, if you don't know, while killing Revenants on a Slayer Task, they have a 5 times multiplier on the drop rate of the Thamron Scepter, Vigoras Chainmess, and the Crov's Bow, which obviously are the weapons I'm after. Now, what this poll actually is, is for the low price of 100 Slayer Points, Crystallia would be able to assign you between 100 to 150 Revenants. And previously, it was only 40 to 100, so this really, in theory, is going to more than probably half the grind that I will have to do, or half the Revenant tasks that I need to get overall to get the weapons. So hopefully, this is going to pass. If it does, I will update you guys on when it does, and of course, I will unlock this. I actually just hit the last attack level I need on the Scorpion task. I've actually been trying to do as many melee tasks as I can to get 60 attack, for the Vigoras Chain Maze. So now I'm pretty much done with melee. I don't need to train it anymore until I get the Vigoras Chain Maze. And that might take a while. So all I'm going to be doing now is basically task with ranged. And that should actually be a lot faster as well. Because ranged tasks I can do probably at two times the speed of a melee task. No way. We just got an ancient crystal. That is really really rare and not useful at all it's 150k i'll take it but uh, man that is pretty much as rare as getting a weapon i'd say oh i'm being attacked by someone snake skin hero i have a lot of food right now so i might as well just try to oh my god dude it might actually kill him this guy has amethyst arrows, by the way, so it might actually be worth me staying here and trying to kill him, because if I do kill him, that- Oh my god, he's almost dead! Oh, he's actually dead! That is amethyst arrows unlocked, I think. It is, yes! Look at that! Amethyst arrows has been unlocked, Amulet of Glory already had that. 
That is a massive upgrade, actually. He just came out of nowhere. Random event, giving me some nice unlocks. No! No way, we actually got this. Oh my god. No way, that is the only weapon I did not want. Oh, it's so rare. I needed the crossbow and the vigoras, and of course I get the scepter. Man, I've done like five or six revenant tasks off video, just hoping to get a weapon that is useful. And I get the only one that really isn't, but uh, it looks pretty good at least. I can train magic with this. It's basically a trident for the wilderness, so it is pretty decent as in terms of a magic weapon. But uh, otherwise than that, it's not really good. None of the wilderness bosses that drop the Void Waker pieces can be killed with the scepter, so that is why I don't really need it. I thought I would give it a spin at the Revenant Knights and see if it would be faster to use this instead of the range setup that I was using, but uh, you can clearly see at my mage level and with my magic gear being absolutely terrible, this is a massive downgrade, so I guess this is just going to be in my bank for a while. And a massive milestone is going to be reached, 100 Slayer tasks has been completed, and we have done many, 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 many hours of Slayer in this video, and of course we got both the Avarice and unfortunately the scepter in this video so far. Now ever since I've unlocked the black dragonhide armor in this video, along with now the amethyst arrows, I have been plotting and scheming for a potential alternative way of actually getting the void waker done without any of the revenant weapons. I've always had the idea that I might be able to kill Arteo for one of the void waker pieces, not with the craftsbow but just with the imbued magic shortbow. I've also been looking into crush weapon alternatives for both Spindle and the Calvarion for the other two pieces, but currently I only have the rune Scimitar. But the thing is, if I kill Arteo, there is a 1 in 358 chance of getting a dragon two-handed sword. This is a crush weapon that is vastly better at those bosses than the rune Scimitar, but also a lot worse than the Vigoras Chainmace, so either way, the Vigoras would be the best. But this is an alternative if I can't get my hands on it. Now when killing Arteo you do need to bind him because otherwise he will run to you and smack you for massive amounts of melee damage and uh, currently I only have the snare ability which holds the boss for 10 seconds. And because my kills are going to be pretty long with this setup I would love to in the future get 79 magic for the entangle spell holding it for 15 seconds. But that is going to be quite a grind I might do in the background with some alking over time and until I get there I'm just going to be using the snare spell. And that is the first RTO KC of the entire account for 12k coins, not the best drop, and very messy indeed. I made a lot of mistakes, so next skills are probably going to be better. Second KC of RTO is Rain RC, it's a pretty good drop actually. Definitely getting into it a bit more, this is KC number 10, and on average I would say I'm getting a kill every 3-4 to four minutes, which is definitely good. Oh, soul runes, wait! That is actually a new unlock on the account, I've never had soul runes, I don't know, there might have been an easy way of getting them, but I guess I have them now. After this RTO kill, that is now 20 KC done, and we get some grimy toad flax, actually a very good drop, 170k or something. But that is actually a very big milestone, because I'm not sure why it works like this, but if I go out and I peek this, it now says that there is no one in there. Before it says you have to have 20 KC to even be able to peek, which is kind of a weird mechanic, because that means everyone who is new to this boss just goes in and crash people all the time. So now, for example, after banking, I can see that there is activity inside, and I will just world hop. And that's that. We are flying through the kills, honestly. This is number 50 of the grind, and I'm going to be going for 100 in this video, so this is the halfway point. No uniques yet, but this is the overall loot from 50 KC. So I would say the regular drops that the boss drops are pretty profitable anyways. This guy with pirate boots attacked me, and uh, this is what happened. Oh, that was a big MSP spec. Arteo was actually MVP this fight. Did we get any upgrades? I think there was snakeskin bandana in there. Oh my god, I'm getting attacked by Arteo. I think there was snakeskin bandana in there, and I think dragonstone bolts. Dragonstone Bolts Enchanted. I was only using Runite Bolts before. That is actually a massive upgrade, I think. And that is 75 KC done. And I am actually trying the Dragonstone Bolts now with the Rune Crossbow. And for the past 20 kills I have, and I would have to say it is pretty decent. I am not sure if it's better than the MSB, but definitely feels like it could be. 
After this, we're hitting 100 RTO KC, and uh, I want to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised with how this actually went. Even though I got no uniques at all, this was just a trying period for how long this grind could actually take if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece. I anticipated it to be a massive grind without the Croft's Bow, but at my average kills of like 3 minutes with this setup, the entire grind for 912 KC, if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece, is only about 45 hours, which I can definitely do. This absolutely does not mean, however, that I'm completely done with Wilderness Slayer. It just means that I can do a mix of Wilderness Slayer and try to get the Revenant weapons for most efficient routes. And I can do some RTO in the meantime as well. But before we end the video, I did get 8 Larin's keys that I have to open from all the Wilderness Slayer. So let's see what we get. And the last two keys are going to be giving us rune plate legs and dragon fruit tree seed. That is actually worth quite a lot, I think. How much is that? Those are nearly 600k. And from all that, we made 1.2 million. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.